Hello, 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 everyone. How's everyone doing today? Are you guys ready to learn how to make some 3D models with Matt the Hat over here on Blender? Uh, Rumi's here, Dragon's here, Bee's here, Nani's here. How are you guys doing, everyone? As a quick reminder, something that would be really smart to do, uh, if you're here to learn how to make your own 3D models, would be to go to the Matt the Hat Discord, and join it with exclamation mark discord and join the voice channel and uh, share your screen that way i can see it and help you out if you have questions hi team killed uh team i killed thank you for the follow good display your little picture up there thank you so much welcome to stream team ilked you know that makes more sense um yeah i should have turned off all the champ with oh well whatever hey mar how's it going all right so, uh, Team Milk, are you here for the Blender stream? I, I hope so, because uh, if you are, awesome. We're here to learn how to do some Blender. So, I'm going to give everyone just a minute or two to load up uh, the software. It should look something kind of like this. Uh, you might not have, like, you shouldn't have recent files. It might be a different splash screen, might be a different version number, but that's okay. As long as you have something that says Blender on it, and it says new file over here, that's what you want. Uh, chat is pretty obstructive. Yeah, let's try to keep the spamming down a little bit today, guys. I bet you at least one person is not upside up, though. Let's try not to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and begin, I guess, uh, right now. So first of all, once you start a Blender, like I said, it should look kind of like this. And we're just going to say we want a new general file. And Blender is uh, a... Well, I guess, what is Blender? Blender is a software that you can use to make 3D models, movies, animations. It's even being used in the Marvel Studios movies nowadays. It's pretty cool. Uh, hi, Belzy. Hi, uh, B. And when you hit new cube, or new th uh, general project, you'll end up with something looking like this. You'll have a cube, and you'll have uh, some other little things going on, and you won't know, probably, what these things are. Uh, I'm going to do a thing real fast. Just as a uh, cool thing for you guys, I went and installed a mod where right down here, if I'm ever doing anything, you can see what uh, keys I'm pressing so uh, you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to just talk about kind of the basics, basic, basics of Blender right now. Because uh, Blender can be a very uh, complex software and can be a, an overwhelming bit of software. And the point of the stream today is to help you not be overwhelmed. Keybind go burr. Yes, this is to share my keybinds for you guys. So uh, what we're going to say, hi Pedro, uh, what we're going to start off with in our new general project is just looking at what we have. Uh, up here we have these different tabs and we're going to be using two of them today. Primarily though, this layout tab. This is your main uh, place where you go and you make all your models and you lay them out in uh, the order that you want them to be in. Is very overwhelming? Well, that's why we're here. That's why we're all doing this together. Uh, on the left side, we have our kind of basic tools. We've got move tool, rotate tool, scale tool, transform tool, and then some uh, an antidote tool, which is just purely drawing uh, in 3D space. It doesn't show up. When you render it, uh, you guys don't need, well, you can see this is what a rendered image of a cube looks like. You can see that squiggly line isn't there. Um, so the annotations are pretty much useless for us. And there's a ruler. Rulers can be helpful, I suppose. I don't really use them all that much. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, just moving our cube around the axis. And you're going to see we have this kind of checkerboard grid pattern and these uh, red and green lines and you might go like what the heck is all that Matt and how are you spinning all around it well the red line green line and there's actually a hidden blue line that you can't see right now uh, is <laughs> oh shit what's going on Nani share your screen um, this is our axes so in blender we have our y-axis that's always going to be this green line. We have our x-axis. That's always going to be this red line. And we have a z-axis too, which is hidden, uh, that I'm going to show up right now. 
you guys can see it now, it says blue line, and Z is what's letting me move this cube up and down. Don't worry about moving the cube up and down yourself, I just want to show you that does there. It is there. Probably not be trying much, because you'll be trying to get the final achievement in South Park. Uh, have fun, Pedro. You're here now, Sonic? Awesome, awesome. So X, Y, and Z, yes. Here for support? Thanks, Loki. Are we sharing screens in Discord? Yes. Share your screen in the Discord. Uh, all right. And it looks like Nani has already run into an issue. That's okay. So, uh, oh, thank you for the follow, Hades. Uh, Hades Hello Blue. I love that name. That's amazing. Was Blender on? Blender is on Mac, Windows. You can buy, uh, get it on Steam. It's completely free. It's awesome. So, uh, bl we've already run into our first issue. So, Nani's screen looks like this. You'll see he's got this thing up here. Whoa, what's going on here? And he's got his normal cube here. So, Nani, you've gone into texture painting at the top. You want to go into layout. See at the very top? You click on that layout button. There you go. You also added in a whole bunch of rulers. Uh, you'll just want to select those with left click and press the delete key. Or backspace key. Or... Yeah, there you go. Good job, Nani. All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there we go. Now, uh, let's talk about our tools over here. Uh, we have our move tool. And you'll see if I click on it. Well, if I don't have anything selected, I'm just going to click over here. And I click on the move tool and nothing happens. Same thing with rotate, scale, whatever. If I click on my cube first, now I can rotate again. Or I can move, sorry, constrained to these axes. If I want to move, to move on two axes at once, there's these handy little cubes right here. Or squares right here that let me do that. So just feel free to play around with your cube, move it around, constrain it, all that kind of good stuff. Throw it wherever you feel like. You're firing a blender in a few minutes? Very nice. Next, we have our rotate. And that lets you rotate along these axes. We can rotate and spin our cube all around. Don't worry if you feel like you mess up your cube at all. We're actually going to reset our cube in a little bit. We'll we'll delete it and make a new one. You like my hat? Thank you, Team Milk. I appreciate it. And then finally, we have our scale tool. And you can see I can scale it on the uh, Y axis here, the X axis, or the Z axis. I'm actually going to uh, Control Z a couple times to get my rotation back, just to showcase a little easier for you. Scaling on the Z the Y, the X, scaling on two axes, or I can grab this little white box here and scale on all three of them at once. Make a big chunky cube. Now, hopefully, again, I'm pressing Control Z to get back to normal. Hopefully you guys have all played around with the, I'm just going back to my selection box up here, with the moving of your cube and scaling and things like that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach you guys one, some of the few hotkeys that we're going to use today. In general, I'm going to try to not use hotkeys too much because I, I find that it'd be easier for you if you can actually see what I'm doing. But these hotkeys I'm going, am going to teach you are so pivotal that you're going to be using them so much, may as well uh, use them. And the first one is actually moving the camera. Now, when I say moving camera, I don't mean this camera object here. It's used for rendering or this light object. Uh, uh I just mean your viewport camera. And that's simply the middle click. If you have a mouse as middle click, middle click and drag around. If you don't have a mouse as middle click, it's going to be a little annoying for you. But you can uh, always use this little gizmo up here in the top uh, right corner to rotate as well. We want to use middle click. The next thing I'm going to teach you uh, is... These four really important hotkeys. And that is, if we click on our cube, uh, the first one is G, the G key. Again, you can see it in my lower left corner over here. And G is the grab, the grab and move your box tool. Now, here's a cool thing. Watch what happens. If I push a button, it's going to snap back into where it started. Oh, snap, how do I do that? Well, if I press G or any hotkey, if I'm ever doing anything with any hotkey and you uh, want to reset, if you're like, oh, no, I didn't like that, you can right-click, and right-click will reset 
uh, anything that has to do with moving our objects or cutting them or doing anything. But it's only until you, as long as you're still doing the action. If you press G and left click to set it and then right click, it's just going to open. If you press G and you go, I don't want, uh, it's, I, I don't like it there anymore. Right click and it'll re -go, go backwards. Why do some axes light up in the top right? They uh, light up to kind of show what's on the foreground, I suppose. Yeah. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is another hotkey. S for scale. Oh, man. Again, if I left click, I set it. If I S and then right click, I reset it. See, I see in the Discord, you guys are messing around. Perfect. Good. It's exactly what you should be doing. And then uh, the final one to show you is R for rotate. Beautiful. You can spin your cue ball around. Uh, now you might be going, Matt, what if I really want to move my cube just straight to the right? Right? If I move it over here, I kind of eyeball it. Well, when I look back, it, it's off center a little bit. That's annoying. And it went down some too. Uh, what if I don't want that? What if I want to make sure it's perfectly in line? Well, what you can do is you can tell it to constrain to an axis. And uh, that's fancy words for saying only go in one way, stupid object. So this is where Blender gets kind of complex. But again, it's okay. We'll take it one step at a time. If I press G to grab, I can then press any of uh, these letters up here, Z, Y, or X, to constrain to those axis. So I press G, and I'm moving it, and now I'm going to tap Y. And you'll see, now I can only move it along the Y axis, no matter what. I can also press X instead, and it'll only move along the X axis. Or Z, and it'll only move along the Z axis. And I'll be repeating that. A cup, a bunch of times. Whenever I do it, really, I'll say I'm going to move along the Z, G Z, G Y, that kind of thing. But I do want to let you guys know what I'm doing there, and that also works for rotate and scale. So if I scale, and right now it's scaling everywhere. But if I just want to make it tall, I'll scale on the Z. If I want to make it fat, I'll scale on the Y. And if I want to make it whatever this thing is then I guess scale on the X and now I have a wall now some of you I've totally I've noticed in the discord have started not just rotating your camera but also panning around time for cursed mapping do it Ethan um what you could do for panning is while you're uh moving around you can hold shift and the uh middle mouse button Shift, middle mouse, and that will get you where you want to go. So I can kind of step along wherever I'm going. And cool trick, um, there's a hotkey again. Um, in general, trying not to do hotkeys, you can do... Uh, I actually don't know how to do this without a hotkey now that I think about it. Uh... Man, I think about it, I really don't, I only know how to do this with, with hockey. Well, whatever. If you press period on your uh, computer, on your keyboard, like if I'm over here, way, way off in the distance, if I select my cube over here, I press period, it flings me back over to it. Period will, will take it to the object. Enjoy at the right time to understand XYZ. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Make sure to load up Blender. We're just going over the some of the basics of movement and all that good stuff. All right. Oh, and again, if I do rotate with R, I can then press X to rotate it along the X-axis. Z, which I, I use a lot, and Y to rotate only along the Y-axis. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, does anyone in the chat have any, or the Discord, have any questions about basic uh, moving of the uh, model of, of your character around, of your cube around, or any questions about uh, Blender as a whole. You press period, what is this menu? All right. Ah, uh, you did not press period. Oh, wait, yeah, you did, you did press period. So, oh, 
I'm dumb. Um, my keyboard doesn't have uh keys on it printed, so I got key uh period and uh something else mixed up. Whoops. Uh, my bad. Um, you want period on the number pad. Period, not period on the normal keyboard. Uh, this menu, if you just press normal uh, period, is a customized thing up here for scaling. My bad. I apologize. Period on the number pad will take you to your object. So if I'm way the heck over here and I come in and press period that on the number pad, that's where it'll take me. Number pad period. Uh, period on the rest of the keyboard will take you to this thing uh, called the pivot point, which we'll uh, get into more later at some point. How can you scale block too big? You press S for scale, and you just move your mouse. If you want to constrain it to one of the axes, you press X, Z, or Y. Hi, Phantom. How's it going? All right. You don't use Blender? That's all right. Load up Blender. And, uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to teach. All righty. Um, again, sorry. I, I only know how to do so many things on hotkeys, but I'm trying to find them over here for you guys. Yeah. You're talking about numbers? Ah. Please tell uh, what hotkey uh, turns into a big T uh, cat girl. That's not a hotkey, although I kind of have a thing that lets you do that. Um, and in tier, some of the useful hotkeys. That's bring... Those are great hotkeys, Sonic, and I will definitely get in. I might get into them tonight. I'm trying to keep it really simple. Did something in period and it stopped letting you pan. All right. Let's take a look at Rumi's screen. Uh, let's see. Rumi, you did something with period and it stopped playing. You are in a... Rumi, try to uh, move your... Try, try to use the uh, middle mouse button around your cube. You close the app and reopen a new one. Okay, never mind then. Cool, that, that works. Um, kind of have a thing. It, yeah, I have a, a super special awesome thing that if I do this, no, you guys are going to understand it but I can totally summon just a human skeleton at any point in time. Uh, you guys can't, but I can summon a human skeleton. Uh, and then I could totally just make those into giant boobs. Um, that last thing did end, and it failed. So I guess we're not doing that list. Um, three of the entire Beat Sarah campaign is on. You're watching Matt that make cursed blocks. Hey, you haven't gotten cursed uh, blocks yet. I don't know if you can get points back. No, I'll look into that. Um, all right. So we have our cube here uh and the next thing that we're going to show you how to do is actually destroy our cube <gasps> we're going to show you how to destroy the cube so we're gonna left click on our cube everyone just left click on it and you could right click and you could come down here and say delete but down here it's also showing you that right here there's this hotkey x so i use x because x is super useful uh or you can right click and press delete and we've gotten rid of our cube. Uh, now, what we can also do is, uh, you guys probably haven't messed around with this yet, but you may see that there's this floating uh, red, looks like a life raft kind of dealio. This is what's called the uh, origin point. No, the 3D cursor. This is the 3D cursor. Yeah, the 3D cursor. And just do me a favor if you can. Do... Uh, was it? Is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Whoops, not that. Shift S. Yep. Do Shift S, and you'll see uh, cursor to world origin. Uh, and you just want to do that cursor to world origin. Just Shift S, cursor world origin. Now just make sure that everything's uh, nice and centered. Rip default cube. Yes, default cube. And now what we're gonna do? Uh, if you join Discord, to give you the absolutely ruined blender roll. Uh, okay, um, is we're going to talk a little bit about primitive modeling. What is primitive modeling? Primitive modeling is uh, what you guys have actually, I can almost guarantee each and every one of you has done primitive modeling at some point in your lives because, because primitive modeling is basically this. You take what are called primitive shapes. You take your basic cube, your basic triangle, your basic tube, your basic cone, 
uh, your basic bridge shape. Unfortunately, Blender doesn't have a basic bridge shape, but they're easy to make. Um, and you make something out of them. Using basic shapes to make something. Exactly. Exactly, Sonic. So Legos, kind of like Lego. Less advanced Lego. If you've done Lego in the past, if you've done any Lego set, you've already done a more complex uh, primitive modeling than what we're going to do right now. And so we're going to do, a all together as a group, a Christmas tree. Now, you might be wondering, how are we going to get our Christmas tree when we don't have any objects? Well, that's our first thing. Uh, we're going to come into Add, Mesh, and we're going to get a cylinder right here. If you'd like to learn the hotkey for that, I'm going to delete my, uh, my cylinder. It is Shift-A, Mesh, Cylinder. Again, Add, Mesh, Cylinder, or Shift-A, Mesh, Cylinder. It's July hat. I know it's July, but Christmas trees are great. They're great. Now, what do we need to do for our uh, our Christmas tree? Well, Christmas trees have a, a stump, a stick, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this. We're going to press S to scale it. And we're just going to make it small. Then we're going to press... Oh, and I see Nani. Yours is looking pretty awkward there. Not right. Not sure entirely what you did. Oh, Nani, uh, do me a favor and press uh, this button up here. This this guy, and do median point. Although it looks like yours already has that. Uh, Nani, it might be best to just make a new, uh, close and reopen Blender and add a new one because you you borked something. I think I could be wrong. Oh yeah, it's good now. Perfect. Okay, so again, I just used S to scale it, make it smaller. Now I'm going to press S again, and this time I'm going to constrain to the Z axis to make it taller. There we go. So again, that was S and Z. Make it a little taller. You got the power polygons on your side? Exactly. Exactly. Now if you are annoyed, that's kind of inside the grid. You can leave it, or you can do G and Z to kind of bring it up some, whatever, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you happy. It doesn't actually matter where it's at in that grid. It, it the engine doesn't care. Uh, now we've got the base of our, our, uh, Christmas tree. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add part of the top. We're going to do once again, add mesh, but this time it's going to be a cone. What modeling software is used for beat saver and blocks? I'd use Blender. I uh, type Shift C as default does not include the. Uh, yes, you are correct, Sonic. I was, I was going to get into that in a, uh, in a little bit, but Sonic is also very skilled at Blender, and so if you ever need help, Blend Sonic can help you out too. So we have, we should now have, again, Shift A or Add at the top, mesh, cone, and we have a cone. And what are we going to do with it? Well. We need to bring it up. So we're going to G and then Z to raise it up. And we're going to S to scale it. And now, uh, as Sonic mentioned, what if we just want to scale it in two dimensions, not in the height, right? Well, we can do S, Shift Z, and now make it just wider. Look at that. So when we do Shift, it says, hey, do the other options than this one. So I did S and then shift, hold shift and Z. And that scales in every direction except for the Z axis. So I'm going to do again, just for demonstration, S and then shift and X. So you can see it's only scaling in this kind of like weird cone shape. It almost looks like a shark there. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Uh, S and then shift Y. And you can't really see it there because camera angles S, shift Y, and it's going in the other direction. So I did S, shift Z, and made it kind of bigger. Or if you just like the default cone shape, you can leave it as the default cone shape. Hi, Shade! Now we have uh, our kind of cone, and we need to make a Christmas tree. 
another one. So we could come in here and shift A, add mesh cone, grab it with our G key, raise it in the Z. Uh, even though it's inside of another thing, that's okay. We still have it selected. If you deselect it, you can come up here to your top right in your scene and select it and shift or S, sorry, to make it bigger. GZ and make it kind of look good. Something like that. Feel free to play around with the scaling of them. Um, Christmas trees are typically wider in the bottom than they are at the top. Just in case you're doing that. Now, you might want to get annoyed thinking, oh man, if I want five, six, seven layers of this, that's going to be annoying to keep having to add in more over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is instead we're going to duplicate this current one that we have. With, yes, as Sonic said, Shift D, well, we have one selected, and now we've made a second one. You may notice I can move it in all of our axes, so as long as I haven't left clicked it yet, left click yet, I can press Z to still constrain it. I'll do that again. Uh, I'll just scale it down a little bit. Shift D to duplicate, Z to constrain, bring that sucker up a little bit, and then I'm just going to scale it a little more. There we go. So feel free to play around with that. I'm just going to make a few more uh, with uh, Shift D, Scale, uh, Z, all those things. Shift D, uh, and then S. And someone said, hi, please keep yourself muted if you're in the Discord. Pretty please. Uh, do, 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 do. Actually, I can just deafen myself. Ha ha ha. Um, there we go. Um, didn't want to type. I'm fair maiden, but let's keep keep it all on here. If someone needs help, I might uh, let them speak, but only if I'm like actively helping them. I think that seems fair. Alrighty. So we should have a decent. Uh, size Christmas tree by about now. There we go. And now, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, give it some balls. This is just going to be a simple uh, test of your moving around in 3D space. Shift A, mesh, and we're going to do a cylinder as our ornaments. Shift A, S, I accidentally clicked circle. We're going to do a sphere, UV sphere. There we go. And again, S to scale, G to grab, constraint to the Z axis, grab it again, pull it out, put it somewhere. Shift D to duplicate. Remember, you can uh, constrain it so it's always on the same axis by Shift D. Or, uh, and then you can do like shift Z and it will only move on two axes, whatever you wish. And just throw a bunch of uh, the ornaments around your tree. Give it some balls. Yeah, give it some balls. Two ornaments, put them around. Uh, if you'd like to, you can take a default cube because the default cube still exists and put a present down at the bottom like uh, Dragon suggested. It's kind of cute. And just go ahead and add in however many uh, Christmas ornaments you feel like your tree deserves. Make sure to get the back too, because it's always uh, sad if you see a Christmas tree that's only uh, organized, or, or, organized? Um, only decorated in a few sides. Now, why are we going to are we doing this? Well, one thing that I think personally people teach too late is giving stuff color. Cause you might be you can be super proud of your Christmas tree, and honestly, looking at the Discord, these Christmas trees are, are great so far. Let's see, what's little Main's Christmas tree looking like? Um let's see, little Main's got Chris got just a stump going on. Yeah, uh Maiden is G to grab, S to scale. And 
R for rotate. Main's just starting. You know? Okay. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just going to give everyone just a minute. You have like 10 hours in it? Okay, perfect. Then I don't need to babysit you too much. Perfect. So. Let's see. Big props to Nani. Nani, your Christmas tree is looking divine. Ruthie, I love your Christmas tree. Rumi, I love your Christmas tree. Very natural. Very big. Perfect. All right. So again, the next thing that we're going to do is basic flat colors. Because I feel uh, that typically you're taught how to do colors after like 10, 15 hours of doing Blender. And it's so boring. Uh, like this gray model, I you, you want to see it bring to life, right? Um, so the first thing we need to do, actually, before we can even get to the that, is talk about rendering, because obviously, if you were to throw this into a game or into an uh like YouTube or whatever, you wouldn't have this grid, you wouldn't have all these random the uh, the UI, you wouldn't just take a screenshot. You'd hit render, and you can come up to the top, file edit render. And there's render image right up here. Or you can press the hotkey F12. Now, if yours is anything like mine, you'll see that uh, it's cut off completely. I can only see one of my pet presents. I can only see like the tip of uh, the bottom of my tree and one of the ornaments. That's not what we want. Again, render, render image, or F12 on your keyboard. But you'll note it. Uh, you might be wondering, where is it getting that camera angle from? It's not getting it from where I'm looking. It's getting it from this object right here. You might be able to see. We have a camera object over here in our scene. So we're going to grab this little handle right here and pull that out. And you want to look, you want to make sure to select your camera first. Pull that out. And we want to look for view. You can also press the uh, N key to pull that out and pop it in. So N or this little handle and go to view. And what we're going to do is we're going to say lock camera to view. Uh, do, 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 do. And now you might be wondering, well, it, it's locking it, but it's not really like doing anything, right? That's because we need to look through our camera first. How do we look through our camera? Uh, this is one of those things that I honestly only know how to do through hotkeys. It's number pad zero by default. I believe you can do view cameras. Okay, yeah. Uh, active camera. So view cameras, active camera, or number pad zero. Uh, wow, no, that was fast. Thank you. Uh, I didn't even see what it was. So again, view camera, active camera, and turn on this lock camera to view. And now you're controlling the camera. So all your same controls, shift and middle mouse click, uh, the mouse, uh, the middle mouse button, you can even G and Z and G and, uh, well, G and S doesn't work. G and R, or R works. S doesn't work. If you want to rotate and be like some cool 90 degree Christmas tree, I don't know. Uh, you can mouse wheel all up and down and just kind of throw your camera somewhere that looks good. Can you scale up only one side? Yes, you can. Um, can you share where lock camera to views again? Sure. Uh, I will get to both. I'll do both of those real fast. So uh, I'll do uh, Team Ilked first. So Team Ilked, if you want lock camera to view, it's this little arrow right here. Or you can press the N key and it's in view. Make sure you press number pad zero first and lock camera to view. Right there. And then not mar, if you want to scale up only on one side, I'm going to uh, go ahead and take my cube here. Zoop. If I press S and oh, uh, if you mean like you only want to grow it, um, like uh, like this nonsense, right? Yes, you can do that. I have not gotten to that yet. Obviously, you can do it because uh, I I uh, just did it. But uh, 
don't try that yet. Um, just because it's a little more in, in, in depth. It's not primitive at that point. Um, your UI is a little different, so you missed it. Yeah, I know Blender 2.9 uh, is a little different than this. I'm on Blender 2.83. So again, view, camera, active camera, and try to set up a, a... And make sure you have the lock camera to view. And try to make sure you have a good scene. And let's just press F12 to render. Oh man, beautiful. Uh, yours might have weird lighting and shadows. Mine has weird lighting and shadows. That's because we have a, a light around here, which you're welcome to move around. Um, I'm just going to throw it kind of in front, but it shouldn't matter all that much. And we'll get into lighting way later. So let's see. Rumi's got it. I'm looking at the Discord. Uh, Rumi, remember, press N on your keyboard and go to View. We're in that little window that just came up. In that little window that came up when you pressed N. And there's a view on the right side. And lock camera to view. There you go. So now you can use G and Z or, or the rotate and move it and shift middle click and make it something pretty. There you go. Let's see. Uh, Nani, could I have you press F12? Beautiful. Your lighting's a little weird. You might want to move around your light. But Nani got it. Looks like Ruthie got it. Ruthie, can I have you press F12, please? You're on Blender Steam. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, Ruth, you're only sharing the application. But uh, Ruth is actually behind me. I can cheat and see hers. Ruth is, Ruth's is looking beautiful. Perfect. Alrighty. And let's see. I know Main's on a Steam version. I don't know what the heck Main's doing. Main's doing advanced stuff. Perfect. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Nani, making the light bigger doesn't actually make the light brighter. Just just for the record. Uh, that's a sun lamp. It's just the sun. Um, yeah. Uh, not Nani's over here like, I want my sun to be super bright. Let's see. And... Nani, wow, Mar, you made a tree. I'm guessing you plopped in a tree. Um, beautiful. All right, so we can now render all together and see something that looks vaguely Christmas tree-y. Perfect. But it's still not colored in. So why did I have us do that, Matt? Well, that's because we want to color it in next. Um, also, don't forget, if you're done with locking the camera to view to turn that off, uh, cause otherwise it will get annoying. So that's this little tab over here or the N key, the view and turn off lock camera to view. Cause otherwise it can mess up and move your camera around. So we want to colorize our tree. So I mentioned up here before, we have a whole bunch of different tabs and these are all for various different things. Um, we're going to ignore all of them today, except for the layout tab and the shading tab. Now, what we're going to do is actually not shading. We're going to be doing something called materials. Um, and this might be confusing as heck looking, and that's A-OK, -okay, because we're not going to do too much. Uh, we're only going to touch on the very basics of what are called materials and applying them. And uh, we're going to do a lot of flat colors. You have an invert tree. Very nice, Mar. So the first thing you want to do is let's click on uh, the top bit of our tree and you'll see this new button down here let's give that a click and all we're going to change today is the base color at least for now we're, we're, later on we'll get to like sword you guys will be making a sword by the end of it and then we're going to mess around with these other things we're just going to click on the base color make it a nice green maybe a dark green beautiful i'm even going to name my material you can name it by just clicking on the material over here and name it dark green beautiful yep yeah, i'm gonna let you guys experiment with your greens or piss yellows or whatever color you feel like making it whatever color you feel like making your christmasy tree I like a forest tree if you understand hex codes you can also just paste in a hex code or rgba or hsv whatever it's got all your basic uh, color code thingy mcboppers all right looking at the discord i see you guys have it 
So, ah, one thing I see, uh, I think Nani, Nani did it right. Perfect. We're now going to click on our next tree element. Click not new. We're going to click on this little uh, circle bar button here. Uh, yes, Maiden, what's your question? We're going to click on that, and we're going to click dark green. And we're just going to select all of our tree bits and click dark green. What's up, Maiden? What's your question? You're slow. It's a okay, Mar. Don't you worry. Now you should have something that looks kind of like this. Now we're going to do the same thing with our trunk. We're going to click on our trunk, hit new, base color, and uh, just make it vaguely brown, which is actually a dark orange. How do you make it so you change the amount of cuts you know before? Uh, you can use the scroll wheel. Um, if you're doing like control R, you can then use the scroll wheel, or there's a little pop up in the lower left side. Um, I'm going to do something that's going to look super confusing real fast. I'm doing it just for Maiden. Tab, control R, uh, scroll wheel up and down, or uh, if I left click down here, it says loop cut inside, and I can change it here. Um, everyone else who's new, please ignore all that. Uh, that's okay. Back to uh, shading. That's all you need here? Perfect. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, again, now we're just going to come in, and let's give all of our, uh, presents and, uh, brown tree, uh, let's give all of our presents and all of our, uh, little, I can't remember what it's called, ornament balls, uh, different colors, and just play around with our materials. You can make, uh, what's really nice is just like the Christmas tree top, you can reuse them. So I made this uh, present have a red color. I'm also going to select this uh, orb up here and also make that red. Because why not? And I'm going to do the same thing up here to this one too. Red here. I'm going to make this present. Uh, I'm going to say, I don't know, like a, a nice blue. Like all my primary colors. Uh, I'm going to remember to name them because it's a smart thing to do and I'll give some of these balls make them yellow you have more of a pine tree uh, I'm not sure what you did Mar I'm guessing you just threw in a uh, a pre-made model let's see oh tea milk tea milk yours is looking beautiful Tea milk, great job. Also, tea milk. I I have a cup of tea right here. All right. So now, when you guys are ready, uh, you all can do 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 do. I'm just going to make sure to throw in my last couple ones. Uh, what kind of tea? This is a uh, jasmine tea. Ami's doing really nice. Yeah, Rumi's is looking nice, too. Uh, Rumi's playing around with the... I guess I'll go ahead and show you real fast. Uh, Rumi's playing around with the Prince BSF down here. And if you'd like, you can turn up this metallic. And that'll make all your blues, or all, all whichever one you have, really shiny. You can also, if you want to make it rough, like on this uh, log, you can turn up the roughness and turn down like specular. But I was going to get into that until later. But yeah, Rumi's is looking nice. I'll go ahead and make all my, my balls metallic and shiny. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. I'll make this green one. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you do that, it does change it for all of them. So keep that in mind. Um, that, are, that have the same name. There we go. So we can go back to our layout view. And this might confuse some of you. When you're uh, ready, let's go ahead and click on Layout View. And you'll notice, as soon as you do, something seems wrong. Where did all my colors go? That's because, typically speaking, uh, as you're modeling, you want to see the flat color because it makes everything a lot more clear. You have your harsh lines. Uh, and also, it makes it run and render um, in the editor much faster. If you do want to see your colors, we have these options up here. 
We have viewport shading, which will just show the shading. And we also have viewport shading uh, with lighting up here. So we have, uh, I actually don't remember where all the names of these are, but we have our flat colors. We have our wireframe, flat color, like our flat gray, our, just our, our colors, and also our lighting. Z render view. Yeah, uh, that's a little different than this. But yes, Sonic. Um, yeah. So now, smoothing the shapes. No, that just shows the lighting. So now what you want to do is once everyone's happy, press that F12 key, come up to uh, image, save, and then save it somewhere on your desktop or whatever. Uh, Matt, tree, and you guys have made your very own, very first primitive 3D model. That wasn't so hard at all, was it? We all did that as a group. Took us 30-ish minutes. You can uh, throw it in the Matt the Hat Discord uh, in the Showcase channel. Be like, look at how awesome I did. Blarg. I would love to see if you guys all posted your, uh, maybe don't go blarg, uh, your trees. And in just a couple minutes, we'll begin on our second project. Um, I'll, I'll let everyone take a moment to ask if you have any questions. Uh, if there's anything that Ewan wants to know, I'll let you save your images and upload them to the Matt That Discord. You want a star, Nani? Oh, man. I can try to do a star later. Uh, where are the colors? Well, I have, again, mine is set to this the gray coloring up here. You can click this button to see just the colors or this to see the colors and lighting. If you're asking about a how to color, Mar, that is back over in our shading tab. You started late, so you know how to color. Okay, I'll go over again real fast. So we go shading. We click on one of our objects. Uh, I'm actually going to make a new object real fast. Uh, just to make sure it's not hard at all. I'm going to make a new... I'm going to make it. I'm going to cheat and make a star real fast. I'm going to do UV sphere, and then down here, there's this cool little window that pop up. You can see how many segments it is, but only when you first put in the object. Mesh, UV sphere. I'm going to make it super small segments. Uh, I want like four. That's super ugly. That's okay. I'm going to make it small. Put it in there. That's kind of star shaped. Then I'm going to go over to my shading view, click on it, hit new, and then I'm just going to change the base color to whatever I'd like. And make it super metallic, uh, no rough. Okay, maybe a little rough. There we go. How to RTX light? We're not doing that. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Beautiful. And then we are we do our render. For some reason the render always zooms in slightly for me. Not entirely sure why. But there we go. Alright. Uh let's see. And oh Mar is sharing his screen now. Cool. Uh also on Discord, Discord has this great thing where you can view all the live streams at once. So I am looking over and I can always see people's live streams if it looks like they're struggling. And Mar, looks like you got it. If you want to use the same material on multiple things, you just click on the next object and you click this little drop down guy right here and you just select the object that you want it to be, the material that you want it to be. Now I've got a very blue Christmas tree. There we go. Beautiful. Alrighty. So that was our very first uh, foray into making a primitive model. Uh, next, we're going to create a new scene or new project. Um, I'll, I'll give Mar just another minute or so to, to color his tree. And then we're going to have everyone save it if you'd like to save it. Uh, in fact, you know, I'll go ahead and make a new folder and save it too. I have a, a big folder for all my Blender stuff, and I have folders inside there for smaller ones. We'll call it Twitch Stream. And then uh, I accidentally made click two of them. 
and we'll call it tree. Tree. Hey, it's me, Slayer. Slayer, thank you so much for the uh the one bit. Uh, use this penny to commission you. <laughs> thank you, Slayer. Welcome to stream. You're so proud. You should be, Mar. You're I like your flat colors too. They look nice. All right. And next, we're going to go ahead and hopefully you saved it. File, save, or save as. Uh, and we're going to do new. And we're going to say a new file, new general, and we'll be back with our default cube. I actually wrote like a sticky note of like a reminder for myself of what I should cover. Oh man. If you literally Googled uh Christmas tree RGB hex, beautiful. That's sweet. I was too lazy to do that. Um alright. So we should again file new and we should get back to having our adorable little QB cube boy. And the next thing that we're gonna do is uh just a uh workshop all together where i'm going to challenge you guys to make a ugly chair um let's see i had an example put in chair of what we're going to do and we're just going to uh let i'm going to do it on screen so you guys can follow along but really you're just going to make something kind of like this this little amazon chair right here um and yes i pulled up a reference it's always good to have references uh, you just want a nice, ugly wooden chair, and you're just going to use your primitive modeling skills that you just learned. You have a flat thing at the bottom, a flat base. You have four legs. You have a uh, little top bit. And that's really all you need. And the reason why I'm having you do this is simple, because we're actually going to make this chair, the same chair, twice in a row. We're going to make it once with primitive modeling, and then we're going to make it uh, again in the correct way. We're going to get to edit mode soon. Uh, well, welcome back, Sonic. Glad you're, you're back. So I'm going to just scale it in the z-axis. Going to then grab it with G and move it up in our z-axis, personally. Then I'm going to shift A, mesh, and I'm going to make a cube. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to shift Z. So it only scales in the X and Y, because remember if we do Shift X or Shift Y or Shift Z, it will scale in the opposite two coordinates. Then I'm going to Shift Z it to make it really tall, because that's what I feel like. And I'm just going to try to kind of align it and throw it wherever I, I want. Let's see. Perfect. That's looking good for me. I'm also trying very hard to not do uh, things that you guys wouldn't know how to do yet. Let's see. Uh, one thing you can do, again, is when you're grabbing stuff, you can do Shift-Z and it won't move on the Z-axis. That can be incredibly handy. Shift-A, Mesh, Cube, Zoop. Actually, let's all make our beautiful chairs. Chairs, chairs, I don't know where's beautiful chairs. There we go. Let's see. I am done with mine. Just about. Uh, make that chair. Says Nani. Nani, I could actually make that chair very easily. That chair is super easy. Um, nice. Trying to troll me. It didn't work. I bet. I mean, I could make it really easy because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I I wouldn't 
recommend you guys try to take that on, though. I also wouldn't do it in primitive modeling fashion, because uh, that'd be silly. Alrighty. I am mostly happy with my chair. It's not aligned as well as I'd like it to be, but then I'd have to do camera trickery that I haven't shown you guys yet. If I wanted to line it perfectly. There. All right, my chair is done. Let's see, I see T-Milk's chair. T-Milk's chair is looking beautiful. Uh, Nani's got uh, like an H. Mar has most of his chair done, perfect. Little Maiden appears to be making a missile. Um, and Rumi went to use the restroom. Uh, let's see. Perfect, perfect. And, all right. Uh, Sonic slash Albert Husky, if you'd like, feel free to share your screen too. Are you making a saber? Nice. Ooh, someone's getting into edit mode. It's Team Milk. Team Milk's already getting into edit mode. Team Milk's doing the fancy, fancy stuff. Whoa, wireframe? Yeah, yeah, you can do wireframe mode. All right. Let's see. Cool. We'll give you guys just a minute more for Nani and Mar to finish up their, uh, their little primitive chairs. And then we're going to make another chair, this exact same chair again, but in the smart way of doing it. Uh, Rumi, since you're just coming back, I'm going to say go ahead and skip for now. And we'll just get you in on the next little bit. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep. Uh, kill that car. What car? Poyo kill. What car are we killing? Unless you mean kill that chair. All right. So. That car? What car? Poyo? You're typing useful stuff since you don't have your mouse keyboard. Ah, okay. Fair enough. We can see what's happening. Fair enough, Sonic. All right. So. Now, everyone. We're going to get into building a chair. That same chair, but correctly. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is to uh, make another cube. We're just going to leave your current chair. We're just going to leave it here. Current chair uh, is made out of, at least for mine, it's made of a whole bunch of different objects. It's made out of, we can see over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cubes to make this chair. That's a lot of cubes. We're going to make mesh cube, and we're just going to grab it and move it off to the side somewhere just a little bit so you can see it. And the next chair we're going to make out of a single solitary cube. Your laptop trackpad trees went, oh, it sucks, Sonic. Go go to bed, learn, do you want to do more, but your eyes say no, aw. Oh. Good night, Rumi. Cameron, please say good night to Rumi. Poor thing. Uh, Johnny Eats Chips. Thanks for following, Johnny Eats Chips. Uh, if you're here to learn Blender, jump on in. This is actually a really good time uh, to do it because we're about to go into... Uh, not primitive modeling. Yes. So, we're going to make it have a single cube. Uh, still wearing full body form for BR chart. Woof. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go into, right, we've been in object mode this entire time. We're going to click up here, and we're going to go into edit mode right here. Or press tab. That's another hotkey. Use it all the time. Edit mode's great. Love edit mode. Oh. I also realized that my uh, hotkey thing turned off. Uh, it's back on. There you go. Edit mode. Uh, and make sure that you only have this one cube selected when you turn on edit mode. Otherwise, everything will be in edit mode. Um, thanks for the lurk, Johnny. Um, let's see. So, again, you should be see it with these. It should be all highlighted in orange now. It's kind of neat that way. Um, man, Mar, you're going nuts with yours. Uh, you're definitely going to want to uh, get to this part, Mar, because it's going to be way cooler now. Um, with a new cube and then tab on the new cube. But man, like, 
props to Mar. Mar with the whole nine yard with the extra cylinders. That's super cool. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, 54, cool. Edit mode with tab or ob click the little thing up here. It says object edit mode. Now, uh, we have a bunch of new tools over here, and we're going to slowly uh, learn how to use some of the, uh, most of them. And, but the first thing that we need to talk about is up here, these three selection-y things. Uh, we can select an individual vertex. That is anywhere that there's a corner or a line or any kind of intersection. And again, we can use this, grab, you constrain it however you want. The Y, whatever. Uh, we can rotate, though it doesn't really do anything with a single vertex. We can scale, doesn't do anything with a single vertex. So we mostly just grab in vertex mode. Next, we have line up here, or edge select, where we can grab an edge. With this, rotating actually does matter. It matters a lot. Do, 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 do. Scale, which scaling also matters a lot. So you can do some nice tapers. Um, again, uh, if you like grab something with G, go, you know, I don't like that. You can right click before, as long as you don't left click, you can right click and it'll undo it. Whoa, T milk, I got no idea what you did. That's crazy. Um, and finally up here, face select. These are called faces and that lets you select an entire area and we can grab, that's how earlier uh, Mar, I scaled off of a single thing. I just grabbed it along the face and scaled it on the Y. You beveled too hard, got it. Um, yeah, you can grab the face, rotate the face, and scale the face. If you mess up your cube, don't be afraid to just delete it and add a new one back in. Yep. Feel free to play with that for a second. You can also use one, two, and three to switch between vertex mode, edge select mode, and face mode. That's probably what I'm going to do out of habit. Um, bevel too hard, your cube. Uh, but there you go. That's what you want to be doing is going into those modes and messing around with your cube. Uh, Ivorali, welcome to stream. Uh, oh, I see you're uh, already doing some insets and things and extrudes. Very nice. Cool. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to select our entire cube. How do we do that? Well, we could take our selection tool and try to left click and select over everything. But you notice I actually missed a bit right here. Um, so if I were to scale this right now, well, that'd be silly. So since I want the entire cube, there's another handy hotkey called A, which selects all, uh, or you do select all up here. That's just going to select our entire object. And we're going to uh, scale it along the Z and make it roughly the size of our little seat that we have over there. I'm also going to move it on the G. Uh, this is actually bad practice for anyone who knows better 3D modeling better, because if you notice, moving in edit mode, this little dot down here is actually the object's origin point. So generally speaking, when you move things, you want to move them in object mode, and you want to scale them in edit mode. But uh, if you end up moving it or something in one of the modes, it's not that big a deal. But in the future, there may be some issue with that. Again, if you want to try selecting your object, you can uh, press A to select the entire object, or you can use the selection tool up here and select over things. If you hold shift, you can add to your selection. If you hold control, you can subtract from your selection. Just generally, you want to make your cube roughly a, a pancakey kind of size and shape and uh, to be a flat box. Perfect. Uh, tea milk, I personally would have uh, done your cuts first. That's just me. Uh, I talent, darling. Can you use middle mouse to lock onto an axis? Yes, you can. You are very right. And shift and the mouse to be like that. Cool. So once you have your 
uh, pancake, your square pancake, the first thing that we're going to do is add what's called a line cut. Uh, we're going to add in a couple line cuts, and we're going to do this to kind of get these feet down here. Uh, you're done? Beautiful, Nani. Uh, that'd be so broken. Uh, if you put that into an engine right now, that'd tear so hard. Um, that's okay. So we're going to come over here to our loop cut set tool. We don't want knife tool. They look very similar. I know we love knives on this channel, but we want the loop cut. You like join to learn things through emailing for yourself? Well, fair enough, talent. But if you ever want to, you're welcome to ask questions. So loop cut, and we're going to left click, and we're going to drag over here and drag over here and that's going to be the width of our cat legs then i'm going to rotate the camera left click and drag over here and drag over here and now our our cube has a whole bunch of new lines in it you learned how to make a raised lightsaber on different software nice what software so yours should look something like this uh you don't need that many you really only need the four um Try making sure you have that. Let's see. Nani. Let's see. Mar. Looks like you're doing fine. Although you have an extra loop cut. Don't be afraid to control Z things. You want the loop cut tool over here, uh, Nani? Not the knife tool. The loop cut tool. You have the knife tool. Don't use the knife tool. You don't want the knife tool. Right click on your knife tool and it'll go away. There you go. You want the tool above it? Right there. Loop cut. I'm going to do this whole process one more time just to be on the safe side. So I'm just going to add in a whole other uh, thing just for everyone. Other cube. So I've got my flat cube. Then I'm going to grab the loop cut tool. And I'm just going to divide my box into a few other boxes to look something like that. Beautiful. Oh, nice talent. A super OCD. How how do you see distances? Try not to be super OCD for this, Mar. We're just doing the basics. Um, but yeah, non users looks good. Uh, a rally yours are doing really good. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, actually, if someone does want to be super OCD, the best way to do it uh, is, in my opinion, use the number pad. You can use one to go to a side view, three to go to the front view, seven to go from to the top view, um, four, five, eight, two. The, those are all six. Those are all different camera options. I only ever use one, three, and seven. Uh, you can do control one on the number pad. It goes to the other side. Control three, control seven, those things. How do you select existing cuts again? So if you have an exi existing cut, you want to use your edge select. That's actually what I was going to get into next. We have this edge select tool, and we're going to use our selection box. And you can select your entire, uh, I'm going to come back over to this one, your entire line. You can shift and just click on the entire line, like so. And then G to move it. Don't forget to constrain it along the axis. or there's a much easier way to do that, where if I hold Alt and then left click on a line, on a loop, if it's a perfect loop, it'll select the entire thing. So again, if you're, you want to make sure move your lines around, Alt, left click on an edge, and then you can press G and whatever uh, axis to kind of move it along that line. Cool. All right. Here's the next thing that we're going to do. And this part's super important. We're going to go into our face select mode up here. And we're going to learn uh, a new thing called extruding. Thanks, talent. That'll give me time to uh, check it out later. We're going to learn how to do extruding. So make sure to grab your face select tool up here, or a three. And we're going to shift select on our three different areas where we want our feet to be. Uh, put it in showcase, talent. Our four different areas. Once you have that, we're not going to scale it in, though that'd be silly. Uh, and we're going to press, as Sonic said, we're going to press the hotkey E, or we're going to come over here to our left side 
extrude region. Uh, it's at like the top green icon. It looks like a box wearing a hat. Extrude region, and it creates a plus. I'm just going to drag that down here. Yes, talent, you are. There we go. Or again, you can press the E key. There we go. Now, if you want it to make it longer, don't press E again, because that will make a whole bunch of different feet. You don't want that. Just press the G key, and then grab it and pull it up or down. You love this? Beautiful. So what I'm also going to do is with my uh, feety feet selected, now, real fast guys, keep your feet C selected. If you don't remember how, grab your face tool, select on your four feet. Now I'm going to do, and if you watch carefully, is I'm going to press S to scale, and you know, I kind of want to taper them off, right? Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Why are they doing that? I don't want that. Why are they going to this weird middle point? I mean, I, I guess that looks kind of cool. But no, we don't want that. Uh, what we want to do is, this is kind of an advanced thing, um, is right now, if we see up here, we have these extra tools. We have global and this weird little linky chain thing. We're just going to click on that. There's a little linky chain thing. Yeah, control Z that, Nani. Uh, and you'll see that we have this transform pivot point. That's what this is called. They're all right now trying to scale based off of where this pivot point is, this little yellow dot. We're going to select individual origins. Normally medium point is where we want. We're going to select individual origins for right now. Now when I scale, they all scale on their own. And I've got some nice little tapered off little feetsies. So again, that was up here at the top. I changed it from median point, which is what we normally want, to individual origins. This chain thing, it's up here at the top. Uh, yes, Sonic, it would, but uh, I'm trying to do like all the like super duper basic-y stuff. But you're correct, Sonic. Mirror modifier would be perfect. Again, I'm just going to come over here and do that same process one more time. I'm going to select all of my faces. I'm going to press the E key and just drag it down on the Z. Then I'm going to change from median point to individual origins. Scale with S. And there we go. And I'm also going to change it back to median point because it's what I normally want. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Sonic, fair. Yeah, Blender and PC should get it. Uh, there we go. All right. Cool. And don't worry too much about the render just yet, though I see someone uh, already poking at their camera. Now, uh, I see, it looks like, who is that? T-Milk. T-Milk's got an interesting backing, but uh, I want to show a, a nice, nicer way to do that that I think you're going to enjoy T-Milk. So... I think you'll learn something here. Might be happy to so hit download for your switch. Oh, nice. Uh, what is it, Sonic? Um, mass murder. Don't murder uh, my poor marshmallow. So, next we're going to do the backing. And you'll notice on mine, I made it have this like cool middle section here. And there's a very good reason for it. This middle section is all going to be part of the same uh, cube that we're making anyway. Uh, so... We're going to grab this corner, E to extrude along the z-axis, and we're only going to do about halfway up. Not all the way up, only about half. Then we're going to E again, where, and that's going to be our little mid bit. E again, and that's going to be to the top. And you'll notice by doing that, oh, hello, how's it going, Exodus? Welcome to the stream. Uh, let's see, shout out Exodus. Uh, what were you last playing, Exodus? You were playing, uh, I didn't actually do the SO. You were playing VR chat. Welcome. This is Raiders. This is normally a VR stream, but today I'm actually teaching a blender to everyone. Um, normally I'd be, te uh, playing, uh, 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 
Beat Saber on the stream. So welcome. Uh, if you've ever wanted to learn Blender, that's what we're doing right now all together. Nice chairs. Thank you, Hrach. This one was done in affirmative modeling, and now I'm teaching everyone uh, loop cuts and stuff. So again, I extruded this out in three separate pieces. So that way I didn't have to do any loop cuts. X is high. I'm guessing you were uh, behind a an, an ad wall. Welcome to stream. Welcome to stream, Arcus. Normally this is a Beat Saber stream, uh, but right now is teaching everyone how to make 3D models. Let's see. And Nani, yours is looking great so far. Uh, if you've ever wanted to learn 3D modeling, uh, join the Discord, join the Blender, uh, or join the discord and download the software blender that's what we're doing right now and even though uh we've already been going on for quite some time you can still jump on i'll be sure to kind of re-explain when we start on our next little object piece so uh we have this face selected right here uh we're going to go ahead and grab and extrude this one all the way up to the top and here's where it gets really cool we can take this and just extrude it along the Y and pull it apart. And there it goes. Now you'll notice it kind of eats into it, which is kind of awkward and you might not want that. It's actually kind of, uh, it's not a problem to have geometry that goes inside of each other, but you might not like it. You might be like, oh man, I really don't want to do that. I don't like it. I'm uh, OCD about, about that. Um, oh, that's why I actually changed that to glue. Um, so what you can do, and this is a really cool thing, shiver down your body, aw. You also do modeling? What do you model in, Exodus? Uh, Exodus is avatar creator. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So I, uh, we just did primitive modeling, and everyone uh, in the showcase channel put did their own Christmas trees. That's what we started. How impressive is that? People had never modeled before, now made their own Christmas trees. Material and everything. Um... So what I was trying to say is we can select this face and then also select this face with shift, right click, and there's a really cool option called bridge faces. And you'll notice that combines the two. Now I did it really far away from each other. I did that so specifically you can see what it's doing. You probably wouldn't want to do it that way. You'd really want it to be, uh, you'd grab it, pull it close, shift left click, and then right click bridge. And now you can't even tell a difference, but there you go. Your view looks weird and warped. Let's go take a look at what Mars view looks like. Uh, what did Marman do? Your view does look weird and warped. I don't remember how to do that. Yeah, principles, yeah, right? Um, your chair is whack, you'd eat it. Uh, Mar, I have seen that. You did a thing uh, where you reversed it. Crud. I don't remember how to do that because I haven't run that issue in ages. Um, you did the number pad thing. Did you press period? No, it wasn't that. Uh, number pad, zero. Which number pad button did you press? Press five. All right, try pressing number pad five. Oh yeah, that's the one. Press number pad five. Thank you, Sonic. Pretty much all. Yeah, press number pad five. There you go. Man, I forget. Totally forgot about that. Makes it like isometric-y. Press number pad five. There we go. All right. Uh, and once you're done with that same kind of dealio up here, I'm gonna add a loop cut this time, just cause I feel like it. Loop cuts are great. I'm going to grab this face and drag it across. And I'm just going to align it and smash it up together that time. There we go. You know what orthogonal view is? Thank you. Yes, I. the word orthogonal. Man, what a word. And I've got two chairs. Beautiful. Uh, again, I'm just going to come over here and do it quickly. KCN still falling along at home. Go grab that. Extrude. Pull it up to approximately where I like it. Extrude. Extrude all the way to the top. And then I will extrude this one. 
boop. Gonna add a loop cut. Whoop. Gonna grab my face. Boop. Throw that in there. Beautiful. Not perfect th that time. Uh, so I'm just going to select these things. Grab. Shrink it. Perfect. How do you connect it? So what I was doing is, uh, let's see, I'm going to select this little bit. Uh, did I reconnect it? Uh, yes, I did. So do 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 do. What I was doing is, uh, in fact, this time I'm going to take two loop cuts, two loop cutted areas. Boop boop. I'm going to make the computer do it for me. All right. So I've got this area. It's got a loop cut. And this one, I'm just going to shift select both my faces, right click, bridge faces, and the computer will do it all for us. Hi, Blackhawk. How are you doing? So again, I'm just going to take that face, shift, take that face. Hi, Seth. Right click, bridge faces. Poke. Can you tell you how to stream on Twitch using a PC? Um, use a software like this one called Streamlabs. And uh, it, it's pretty easy. At that rate. All righty. So now we have our chair. Let's see. I see it looks like... Who is this? Uh, Mar is about to bridge those faces. You want to do bridge faces, Mar? There you go. Mar's got it. Let's see, Nye's got a table. Looks like T Milk's got a beautiful chair. Uh, if Rally, yep, yep. Click that. Yep, perfect. And now if Rally's, we're going to watch your stream. Click that, click that. Right click, bridge faces. Hey, there he goes. Beautiful. Uh, bridge faces isn't something that I use all the time, but in some situations like this, it's really useful. Uh, you could even come in here now if you want some more detail, and I'm just going to select all these faces up here. Just going to select all of them, and I'm going to scale them and go, oh wow, that looks terrible. So I'm actually going to extrude them and then scale them and then grab it the, and move it down. That looks a little better. There's actually a better way you could do it than that, but good enough for now. Tell us clickbait and you know how to PC. Um, the title says, I'll teach you to make 3D models in Blender. No, if you already have Blender, you need zero 3D model experiences. Uh, like you're doing now, like you're without warping all the cuts. So you could, could you move a bridge thing down? Yes, yes, you could. Um, so if we look over at Mars screen, Mars doing that, go ahead and keep showing us Mar. if you'd like. You want to move the entire object down. Yes. So what we want to do is, let's see, I'm going to, uh, do it the same way Mar has it just to be on super clear. So I'm going to take these objects and scale them back up. So what Mar did was he took this and this and right clicked and hit bridge and then he wants to move it up and down but it's also move not moving his cuts can you do colors now yes you may nani go for it uh well we could just select these faces as well and move that up and down as well just make sure you get the top and bottom um another way to do it would be in edge selection mode up here we hold Alt and make sure we click on that and it should select that entire loop. You'll see that. Alt left click. Alt, sh Alt, Alt Shift left click, I should say. And there we go. Moving the entire object. And G and then Z. Mr. Mr. Marman. G, Z. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just found your, your peanut 3D model. Perfect. 
Uh, all right. And then, yeah, again, if you guys would like to color stuff, I'm just going to color this one by going into shading and new. I'm going to give it a brown shade, which is really like a dark orange. And I'm going to come in here and make it super rough. And uh, that's really all that I'm going to do for that. Lower specular. Beautiful. Uh, does anyone have a two meter long back? I mean, no. Probably not. GG's the... Yeah. Um, GG's uh, another good one. I'll go ahead and teach that real fast, Sonic. Um, Sonic makes a good point. So if you have a line, like I'm just going to select this edge here, and I can grab it and I can move it. I can say GX, or sorry, GY, and it'll scale along the Y. Or I can just press GG, and it'll automatically say it'll be constrained to its current like axis. GG's pretty great. Hey, Norzy! Welcome to stream. You are late, but if you have Blender and you have like any experience in Blender at all, our next project's going to be pretty great. It might be a little uh, hard, but it'll be, uh, you'll still be able to do it. Just a minute. If you do have Blender, make sure to load that sucker up. Let's see, you've absolutely no experience. That's fine. Grab Blender, load it up, and the next problem is going to be the next thing is going to be definitely more confusing than normal. But uh, if you're smart, I know you are, Norzy, you'll be able to get there. Let's see. Two chairs, one up, one cup. Got no, you're dumb. And you're in bed? Okay. If you're in bed, then uh, you, you don't get to do Blender because you're asleep. Yeah. There we go. That's my array of chairs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I move the camera around. So again, to move the camera, you click on your camera, press number pad zero or uh, view cameras, active camera. And then you click on N, or this little tab over here. Go to the View section, lock camera to view, and move it around. How do you extrude the cylinder? Uh, you you mean you want to extrude them in a cylinder uh, shape, Mar? I wouldn't. If you want to do that, you can. You would need to go significantly higher poly count. Um, and really, it'd be better to just do it the way you did it before. You just slap some cylinders in there. Yeah. Uh, what you want to learn is how to make sabers for Beat Saber. That's definitely not, like, the first thing that I would teach, Norzy. Uh, you got to learn the, the basics first. Try and learn all the tutorials in each work are confusing. Um, yeah, that, that's actually uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about at the end is, by the end of this, you should have enough knowledge that you could. Um, but... I will also be putting out a uh, curated list, like a spreadsheet in the Math Hat General after this is done and over with uh, for where you can learn you know, the next steps. Let's see. This teaching session has been great so far. Well, thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, Maiden went straight to Sabres, but Maiden's already been doing it. Uh, been modeling for a while, it sounds like. All right. Looking over at the Discord. Looks like if, if Raleigh, you've got some great stuff. I know you've been playing around with the, the bevel. Nice, nice. Uh, Main's making a cool saber. If you're at Javad, yeah, you can do that. Let's see, Mar, you've got a nice, uh, beautiful chair over there. Nani's got some color, some colored chair, like the Barney colored one. Uh, the cursed one is great. That would not work in a game engine. And tea milk, nice and simple, looking good. Um, using the info you've learned so far and given an, uh, enough time, you could probably end up with working series work now. Not so much. Yeah, you definitely could. Uh, do, 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 do. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Alrighty. Uh, 
we're going to begin our next project here in just a uh, couple minutes. Just a minute or two. <laughs> Jesus, Mark. Uh, is it possible to make 3D models make them the sabers? It is. But, uh, yeah, that sounds great, Norzy. Go for it. Um, Chris chair is saber. So, actually, uh, while we let, let Team Milk kind of catch up, one thing that I really want to do is there's a great meme called Graphic Design is My Passion, and it's all garbage uh, MS Paint stuff. I really want my sabers to be just the default cube um, because everyone always abuses the poor default cube with a, a default cylinder on top of it and it just it, it just just this like and that be my my sabers sounds good Norzy Like, absolutely nothing fancy. Just that as my cylinders. Or as my savers. And people will be like, why are your savers so ugly, Matt? I made them myself. Just because I think that'd be hilarious. I think that'd be amazing. Actually, kind of looks like a Roman Coliseum column there. Alrighty. <sighs> It actually makes it look almost important. Like, here's the advisor's chair, the king's chair, because it may have wood. You know? It almost makes it look good. That's sad. Let's see. Put that just off frame. Um... There we go. Beautiful. You'll be back up for you. All right, Nani. You have an idea, Mar? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to start. Uh, ooh, Mar's getting into uh, some of the other stuff now. Oh, you're just extruding and scaling? That works. Oh, no. You are using the uh, uh, starts with an I tool. The uh, bev Oh, no. You're using bevel, not inset. That makes more sense. Perfect. All right. Let's see. Thank you for the follow, LiveEZ Studios. Welcome to stream. This is normally a Beat Saber stream uh, channel, but uh, today I was teaching everyone how to make Blender stuff. Yeah, Mar, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. Um, so let's go ahead now. And, I, you know, because I see everyone's doing really good. You guys are doing way further than my expectations. Uh, just because I wasn't sure how this was going to go. I'm going to show you something really cool. Let's see. I'm going to select all my top little lines on my chair. Uh, it's actually kind of annoying to select. Do, 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 do. And then I'm going to press Control B or over here, bevel, and grab this handle. And look at that. Now, uh, when I bridged it, I actually did it slightly wrong, so mine's kind of janky. So uh, I'm just going to clean that up. Yours shouldn't look like that. If yours does, you can grab those, right-click, and you should be able to dissolve vertices or delete vertices. That should fix itself right up if yours happens to have that same issue. And look at that. Real pretty. Can you import this shit into game? Yeah, that's the point. See, so again, go come over here. I'm going to uh, select with edge select mode. Go grab this uh, bit for my chair with whoops, shift and alt and left click. And I'm going to do the top and the bottom. Now, you may be wondering why it's not, not selecting the entire thing. That's because there is a break in the loop cut because of the extrusions from earlier. And then I'm going to press Control B. And when you do the hotkey, it doesn't give you the tool. It just starts going. And there you go. You can also do them separately if you'd like to. It's looking kind of wonky because my geometry is not that much. Um, if I uh was planning on beveling this i would have actually done the bevel initially like earlier and i would have added more geometry but there you go 
you can do that. Actually, the really real way I would have done this would have been to do a different tool entirely, uh, where I would have shrunken this. You guys want to see the true pro way of doing this? Uh, we would simply do that, 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 that. Then I would have grabbed all these faces and done this other tool over here called inset faces. Then I would have extruded on the Z. I wouldn't have uh, inset them that much. That's just for example. Uh, that way, when I come over here later and bevel them, it doesn't look bad. Why am I showing you this now? Just to prove, if anyone watches the VOD later, uh, they're not like, this idiot doesn't know what he's doing at all. Um, it's called teaching. You start with the fundamentals. There you go. That looks better. Okay. Anyway. Bro, it's fucking epic. Yeah, that's the point. How to render? You can press uh, render render image or f12 if raleigh try pressing just f12 let's see or render render image and whoa if raleigh's is looking weird why is it doing that uh close that yep you've got a single camera Oh, don't click the rendering yet. Yeah, do render, render image. Render image, the top one. You're doing render animation. So you don't want render an random render animation. Your bevel's making it high tinglys weird. See, I can see that. Um Yep. It'll do that. It's cuz a uh, you're beveling and you don't have too much extra geometry. Um you need more line cuts, loop cuts, basically, Mar. Let's see. What about using PBR texture for a 3D model? Uh, you very much can do that, Alex. Um, whoa. Why is it doing that? Uh, I am just purely teaching the zero uh, understanding, uh, zero knowledge necessary. All these guys so far have used, um, just done, what's it called? Uh, primitive modeling so far. Let's see. Oh, you deleted your camera. I think that's the problem. Let's go ahead and put back in a camera. And we, we should also put in a new sun light as well. Uh, don't lock it to a 3D cursor. Lock to view. T-Milk. Or Ivrali. Sorry. Ivrali. Yeah. There you go. There you go. But also, hi, Alec. Welcome to stream. Uh, there you go. Zoom that out. Perfect. And... Add in a new sun in there as well. Should be just shift A sun. Let's see, so if you add cylinders, you can make it part of the model. Uh, so you can move all of it. You can. Um, what you can actually do uh, is inside of edit mode, you can add more meshes, um, and that will work. Or you can just add a collection, make them into like a a collection. Now try hit rendering that. Why is yours being so weird? I have no idea what setting you changed. Uh, Harach. Oh, wait. No, there it goes. Now it ran rendered perfectly. It might just be a weird wonky thing with your computer, Evrali, but it looks like it, it worked. So I would do image save as just to be on the safe side while you have it. Image save as and grab that. Oh, I re just realized all the event bar stuff at the top is covering the stream. Oh man, I wish I had said something at the very beginning. I've gotten rid of all that earlier. Um, you're doing 3D while watching, guys? Nice. How did you add them with the correct spacing? What was the question? Don't worry, Hirachi. We, we got it. Um, what I would do if I were you, Mar, is I would come over here, and it's kind of an advanced question. I would shift, right click, and that will place your 3D cursor. Then I would, uh, while in edit mode, Add in a cylinder, and I do all the scaling options 
um, things that I'd want. And then I would simply uh, go into like top down view and turn on either wireframe or sorry, turn on this mode, which is like x-ray mode and then shift D and constraint to the axis, shift D constraint to the axis, shift D constraint to the axis. That's what I do. Yeah. Hope that makes sense, Mr. Marman. There we go. Alrighty. Uh, perfect. All right. I think we're ready to go on to our next project. For and wow. Mar, look at Mars. Mars is so shiny. He's got a cushion on there and everything. Mar, MVP of the day, I think. Let's see. Oh, wait, no, that's not Mars. That's T-Milks. Never mind. T-Milk. T-Milk MVP. Good job, T-Milk. Throw that shit into Showcase 1,000%. Evrali, great job. Let's see, I did I save mine? I don't think I did. Um, Image, save... And we're going to say, Matt, chair. You love Blender? Graphics part is the part you love. But if you're uh, bored to try new things like Blender modeling, et cetera, beautiful. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, real fast while we let everyone wrap up and uh, your chairs. I'll show you what I'm working on real fast, Alex. And Alex, if you'd like, you're free to join the Discord. I'd love to um, to see what you've been working on. That'd be That'd be awesome. See, this is what I've been working on recently. It's a uh, little, little sea shack. Cute little sea shack. I'm actually following one of the Grant Abbott tutorials uh, for this. This is what I've been working on. It's crazy. Nah, it's a lot easier than you think. Um, yeah. Like it's a lot easier than you think. Once you. Once you guys are done with today's stream, I bet uh, some of you will go on and be able to do things almost like uh, like this level already, just after this, just because I know how smart all you guys are. Um, the water bit is, is definitely weird, but outside of that, like the actual structure of the shack itself, you guys could do this. Looks like something on a, a raft update. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. All right. So now... We're going to make another new uh, file. And this one is going to use a lot of the same techniques that we just learned for our cube. But I am going to teach a few new things. Or sorry, for our chair. But I am going to teach a few other new things. And the reason why I'm uh, going on to... Thank you for a follow, Alex. Um, the music bonus in 2016. Nice. Um, the reason why I'm going on to this project is because it'll be a good way to reinforce all the things that we just learned. And what we're going to do now is you learn how to make a simple wooden mailbox. Um, mailbox. And I'm going to show you guys kind of what I'm talking about uh, as an image. Let's see. Um... Do, 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 do. Let me find one. I had one before and I lost it. Uh, just something like like this. We're just making uh, an even uglier version of a wood mailbox like this. It's going to be sticking on a post. We're not even going to have a cool back post. At least I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to have it straight down. And that's roughly what we're going to be making. So go ahead and start up a new file with uh, either Control N or File New. Make sure to share your screen. And uh, do, 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 do. You join this Discord? Beautiful. You're welcome to join the voice chat and share your screen if you'd like. Um, or showcase in showcase. You don't really understand lighting? Don't worry, T-Milk. We, we haven't gotten to light, lighting. I'm not really going to cover lighting. Lighting's actually a pretty complex subject. Um, lighting and shadows and doing all these kinds of cool things. Uh, I did a project relatively recently just to like explore... Uh, lighting and uh, it, it's fun but it's certainly uh, not the easiest thing in the world 
I think it was, yeah, it was this project that I did uh, right here, which is kind of a, a comedy scene of this, this dude who, uh, fought, you know, like a little, little worker who um, is scared of this giant gorilla guy and atmospheric fog and stuff like that. Can you copy things in that mode? Yes, Shift D to uh, copy things. Shift D is duplicate. Shift D is duplicate. Don't do copy paste. Do Shift D and then constrain to an axis. Shift D and then like Y. Let's see. We're gonna we're gonna look at Mars screen real fast. Do Shift D and then press uh, X because the way you have yours rotated. Do Shift D, then immediately press X. There you go. Shift D X. So when you press uh, X, it's the same as if you had just done the grab tool. So like if you do G and then X, uh, that's grab, and then you press X, and that will uh, constrain it to the X axis. There you go. We just had a scare where you are. Uh oh, what's the scare, Sonic? Alrighty. So. Once again, going to load up a new file, and we're going to start off on our mailbox. Um, because it's going to be a mailbox, I'm going to put it somewhere up in the sky, just a little bit. G, Z, sister does not know about metal microwave heating up. Ooh, that sucks, Sonic. I'm going to explode it a, a microwave. And now I'm going to come into edit mode, and I'm going to make it roughly mailbox shape. I'm going to... Uh, scale on the X a little bit, scale on the Z a lot more, something like that. And now uh, this part is definitely going to be something new. So even if you're still working on a uh, chair or another project, follow along or at least take a look. Um, yeah, I'm glad it wasn't a fire sonic. I'm going to select with three this face. And because uh, I need to make a hole, right? So you might think, oh man, the best way to make a hole is to take you know three cubes and and put them next to each other, uh, and you know like, there, there's a hole, right? No, that's not that's not how you make a hole. Don't do that. Select this face, and we're going to press uh, this over here. Inset faces or I is the hotkey. And now we have uh, a selection. And if you are using the tool, as many times as you do it, you'll make more. Don't do that. We just want one. So again, I'm going to press select that face, I, and just kind of move my mouse in. Beautiful. Now, once we have that, what are we going to do? Uh, well, Mar, make sure to save your chair. OK, fine. Uh, we're going to press E to extrude. But instead of extruding out, this entire time we've been extruding out, we're actually going to extrude inward towards the back of our cube. Look at that. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I don't know how deep this is going. Well, you can turn on wireframe, or sorry, not wireframe, this viewport shading x-ray mode up here. And then you could just, if you're not happy with it, G and Y or whatever to grab that and move it around. So again, I'm going to, going to do that entire process over again. I'm going to add a new cube. Go bring it up in the sky. Going to make it a little bit bigger, or going to shape it slightly. Scale it on the X. Scale it on the Y until I'm happy with it. Uh, scale it on the Z. Something like that. Then I'm going to select this face. I to inset. Bring it in. E to extrude and pull it towards the back. If I want to see through it, I can click this guy up here. To let me see through. I'm just going, wasn't happy with where it was, so I just press G and Y to grab it. There we go. Um, wow, the mat's hole. <laughs> thank you, Venus. Thank you. Uh, so there we go. So now uh, we're going to do a similar thing. See, so it looks like Nani got it. Mar, you're doing it from the top. Uh, if you're making like a bucket, I guess that works. You you won't be doing it from the front because we're making a mailbox. 
you can just control Z that if you'd like. Um, you were a Chinese player, oh no, okay. Uh, hello there, Matt in the hat. How's it going? Uh, actually, funny thing here, guys. Matt in the hat is uh, someone who I found one day and went into his channel. Uh, he plays mostly uh, Ocarina of Time, it looks like. Um, at least that's what I saw before. And uh, seems like a generally cool, cool guy. Matt, I normally play uh, Beat Saber, but today I decided to teach everyone uh, how to learn do th some 3D modeling. So welcome to stream. All right. So uh, like I said, we have this hole, this like sideways bucket looking thing, and we're going to turn this into a uh, mailbox. First thing I'm going to do, because a mailbox typically has a kind of rounded roof, right? Uh, yes, you did, Donnie. Perfect. So we're going to come to our front, and we're going to press Control R to loop cut, or we're just going to click our loop cut tool. Let's see. Mar, are you lost? Do you need me to show you again? Good morning, Zad. How are you doing? Let's see. It's transparent. Uh, that's this button right up here for transparent. It's this guy. Or Alt-Z is the hotkey. Let's see. Again, just because I want to make sure no one gets lost. I have a cube. Go into edit mode. Select the front face. Inset. And then extrude inwards. Like that. Type of modeling is for animation, right? Uh, this is just 3D modeling. You can use it for animation, for movies, for video games, which is what it's primarily for. Um, advertisements. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with, with it, Matt. Um, let's see. What I've been recently working on was uh, this little scene over here. Um, don't worry, I didn't erase my work, guys. You do 3D modeling as well, but for fabrication. Oh, so you do like CAD. Um, I do mostly like game modeling. Let's see. This is what I'm working on. Oh, it does not like having both Blender, two things of Blender open at once. This is a cute little little scene I've got going on right here. Yeah. So let's see. Mar, uh, you want to make sure to again. You want to select your face. Yep. Yep. There you go. You got Mar. Perfect. All right. So now we have this, and. Uh, you want to make a loop cut down the middle, right here. Right here down the middle, right in the front. Control R to make a loop cut, or the loop cut tool. More Matt the Hat similarities, right? Yeah, it's crazy. That's really crazy. All right, Mars got and I's got it. Perfect. I'm going to hope anyone else who's watching also has it. Oh, I just saw someone else started streaming their screen. Uh, all right, perfect. So we're going to go in, press 2 on our number pad, or on our non number pad, our top keyboard row, to go into edge select mode. We're going to grab just this line up here, just this one. But, uh, yeah, just that one. G, Z. And you'll see we now have a triangular shape. <gasps> Beautiful. I'm also going to do the same thing with the inside one, G, Z, and make them both triangle. I could have just selected both of them. That's fine. I just wanted to show you that you can always redo it later. You have cat fabrications. That's a good question. So you should have a roughly triangular shape like that. So I just grabbed this top line with edge select mode. Grab the top line. GZ. There we go. Whatever you prefer, whatever you think looks better. Food packaging machinery, very cool. I kind of like both up, personally. Now, I am going to select both because I want to round this out. So I'm clicked on that one with edge select. Shift, click on that one. And we're going to do a tool that some of you guys started messing with before called the bevel tool. Now, the bevel tool can be pretty complex because uh, it's got a lot of awesome options for it. Uh, we're going to click on it, and again, we should see our little yellow thing, or Control b And I'm going to select, whoa, what's going on there? 
Do I also need this front face selected? I do. Okay. We, we need all three of these selected. This bit, this bit, and this middle one too. Now I'm going to drag this out, and I'm trying to round it. And you can see that it's really flattening it. That's not what we want. You don't think yours went to plan? Uh, your screen seems to be frozen, Nani. Um, let's see. Yeah, tea milk. Tea milk's got it flat. Exactly. So, here's what we do. You don't think yours went to plan? All right. Uh, Nani, you just want to make sure to select uh, the middle inside line, too, and then grab on the Z. Grab the inside line, GZ. Grab both. That one, that one, yep, GZ. There you go, perfect. All right, so now we're going to select all three of these lines. Once again, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And we're going to press Control B or the bevel tool. And we're going to pull it out some to where it's kind of this flat roof. Give an airplane, beautiful Mar. And when I left click, you'll see this little window down here pops up. We're going to select that. And there's this option here called segments. And that's really what we want to mess with. If we add segments, we can see it adds more geometry, adds more line cuts for us. And that can make it rounder or NAS round. Personally, I'm going to do... I think three. I think three looks good. Nice, rounded. Uh, you can also, just to redo this, control B, move it, and you can use the mouse wheel, and that adds or subtracts. That's usually what I do personally. You like the flat roof on yours more? That's fine. You can have that. So personally, I'm going to, let's see, uh, grab that, pull that down. Yep. And yeah, you could just use the mouse wheel. And let's see, Nani, go ahead and give that left click just real fast. Once you're done. And down, oh, no, Control Z. You, you deselected it too much. Nani, Control Z once. Uh, this is a very common thing. Control Z again, Nani. So it's a very common bug, so I'm actually glad someone had it. Uh, okay, bevel, pull it down some with your yellow wand. Yep, and then just let go, and you should see, don't click anything off, now a little tab at the bottom left appeared. The moment you select something else, it'll go away. There's a little tab right there, and you should see segments. It's the uh, fourth option. So effect width type width segments. It's near the top. There it is. There it goes. Beautiful. Or again, you can just use the scroll wheel. So that's what I'm going to do. Control B and then the scroll wheel. I personally like mine like that. I think that looks good. Personally. Let's see. Tea milk, yours looks lovely. Nani's got it. Mar likes his flat roof. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Alrighty. So we have our um, li little kind of uh, uh, inside of our box now. And now we're going to do something else. We're going to learn a new tool. Actually, I kind of already looked, showed you this. I hinted at it. We need our post on the bottom here. We're not going to go a fancy post that's on the back and things like that. We're just going to have it be slapped on a stick. So we're going to use our face select and select these two faces. Now what you could think, and don't follow along with this part, just, just watch. You could think we extrude and then scale and then, and I guess that would technically work, or you could extrude, scale, extrude, and like that, that does work. That actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I actually can't better than I thought it would, no. Nice. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that, that happens sometimes? Extrude just a little bit, scale, extrude. Neat, that actually looks good. But uh, I wanted to teach something else, so uh, we're not gonna do it that way. Um, instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn inset faces here. So don't extrude that. Don't, don't extrude the bottom of it if that's what you're doing. Uh, we want to select these two bottom faces and we're going to inset faces. And the reason why I'm teaching you this is because yours might look different than mine because when we inset the faces, this is a very, very, very common problem 
that uh, people have, which is this offset even guy and boundary guy. You want to have offset even and boundary turned on when you're insetting the faces. And what that'll do is that will make it go from either the outside or the inside. It's especially noticeable if you only have a single one selected. Look at that difference. So again, we're going to control I or use that little thingamajigger, uh, the little yellow tool. I personally always prefer the hotkeys because I am extra like that. Um, even though I can't see any of the keys on my keyboard. Um, yeah. Control I. Wait a minute. I just realized I didn't have my show screencast keys on. Darn it. Sorry. Doot, doot, control I. What? For some reason, my inset seems to be breaking. I don't understand why. Whatever. Go there. And now we just, uh, I'm going to personally grab it down slightly because I thought that looked nice and then extrude downwards. And there we go. We have a mailbox. Uh, Cornman, you like my hat? Thank you, Cornman. I appreciate it. Cornman, this is normally a Beat Saber stream uh, channel, but today I decided to teach everyone how to do 3D modeling. How are you doing, Cornman? Do you play Beat Saber or uh, 3D model? And I'm also going to personally grab this post and bring it towards the back. And you'll notice when I do that, it pulls the entire geometry with it. Kind of nice like that. I just grabbed that face, pulled it back. I uh, just need one. You can press S and scale it down if you want to. Yes, you could do that. Uh, do you do multiple inserts to make it smaller? Perfect, thanks. Yeah, perfect. Uh, oh, yeah. If Roch gives advice, Roch has been doing 3D modeling for tons and tons and tons of years. Listen to Roch. Okay. Sorry, I had to cough. Alrighty. Now, finally, um, I'm going to show you guys a kind of cool technique to get a, a door, like a door flappy bit. This isn't honestly how I would do a door if I was going to make a, a model for a game asset. And I'm only going to show you this because I think it's a cool technique to know how to do. But... You, it might not be the best way to do it uh, in a game engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside my, my mailbox, and I'm going to select all these back faces here. All right. And now uh, I can tell if I have them selected by I can move it around and wiggle it. looks like it's twerking. Um, once I have those back faces selected, it's going to be kind of weird. So let's see, I'm going to make sure uh, I see Mars got them selected. Team Milk, make sure grab all those back faces. Yep, yep, yep. Shift click all of them. Uh, do, 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 do. Nani looks like he's AFK. Um, so now we're going to Shift D to duplicate. I'm going to constrain on the Y to bring it forward. So I, Nani, I selected all the back faces and Shift D. And now you'll notice we just have a weird plane of existence right here of just faces. That is a thing that you can do. Um, and this is ultimately going to be our little door. How are we going to do that? Well, some of you guys, I see Mars already figured it out. All we have to do is extrude. Extrude with E. I'm just going to make it nice and thin. Bam. Look at that. And what's nice about doing this technique is... Uh, is that it would fit if this was a game object um for example it would fit perfectly flush in there which can be desired sometimes because it is literally the exact same object um if you dislike something by the way and you want to select all of an object you could you know 
click over it and then rotate around and shift click over it. Uh, another nice thing you could do is you could put your mouse over something and press L and that will select linked. So if you see, if I select this, uh, if I deselect everything, click on this door, it selects the entire object for the door. Um, then you can uh, do stuff like if you want to, uh, you can come in and uh, add in some... Actually, my loop cuts are being weird. That's weird. That's real weird. Well, if you want to, you could modify the object more and add in, uh, I don't know, a, a handle or what have you on there. Um, stuff like that. But we're not going to bother with that today. Um, instead, I'm just going to uh, select the linked object. Select the linked object, please. Thing. Now it's being weird for me, even though I literally just showed that I could do that. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to kind of come over here, rotate it along the x-axis. So it kind of looks like it's flopping open. And put it wherever I think looks good. Because I don't know about you guys, whenever I see a mailbox in a game or something, it feels like it's always flopped open. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, let's see. I'm also going to, uh, if you want to, you could add more details to this. But really, I think that's fine for now. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to show you, and now I remembered why uh, I had the mailbox in here, uh, is we're going to go ahead and go back to our shading. Oh, I see someone add the monkey. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to go into our shading section in just a minute. And that's going to be super cool because we're going to add multiple different colors onto this one object. Uh, so far, all of our things have just been single color. That's fine. Um, again, we're just doing material editing and materials are super basic forms of shading. Um, or super basic forms of coloring. But we're going to do a slightly more advanced version. So... With our object selected, we're going to go into the Shading tab. And now, uh, let's go ahead and give it a base color. I'm going to start off with the base color of the mailbox head itself, because I think that makes the most sense. So I'm going to give it like a nice, I don't know, uh, bright red color. Oof, that's maybe a little darker. There we go. Dark red color. That's what I want. Uh, and then I'm going to name it dark red because it's good practice so uh what we need to do once we have that dark red color let's see i see looks like most of you guys have it mr marman just change the base color to whatever you feel like uh we're going to press tab and now you'll see even though we're in the shading mode we can actually still edit our object as much as we want uh the bevel still works the uh, grab still works. All of our tools are gone. We can actually pull them up with T key. That's a fun fact. But even in the shading, we can still edit our uh, mailbox as much as we'd want to. But we're not going to edit the mailbox right now. Instead, we're going to use that to select all the faces of our door. Again, you can do that with L or with uh, Shift and the selection uh, tool. And now... We need to add a new color. So we're going to press this little like double page button right here. And you'll see it copied the current ones, dark red zero one. We're going to name this metal. And I'm going to make this a gray color. And you'll notice, uh oh, everything changed. Well, that's because uh, when I copied it, I am only applying it to the entire object. That's not what we want. We want a different color. How do we do that? Well, if we only want this object to be a different color, there's two ways we could do it. One, we could make it a different object, which is not what we want. So we're going to do it the correct way. Down here on our lower right side, we have material properties. This will show up that same principal BSFD thing that we have that we were messing with. 
but it'll also show this extra list. So I'm going to select my dark red again as my base color. Then I'm going to press this little plus icon that's in the top right. Boop. I'm going to select my metal. And then I'm going to hit assign. And whatever is selected when I hit assign will actually become that, uh, that material. And then I'm just going to, because I want to be, you know, kind of metally, uh, I'm going to make it a kind of light gray and I'm going to make it metallic and I'm going to make it 100% metallic and really low on the roughness. Look at that. There we go. So again, you select with face selection and you hit assign on the bit that you want it to be. Let's see. I'm going to do it again with my post here. Face select. Going to select my post. I'm going to make sure I spin around and grab all of it. I'm going to come over here to this little plus. New. And I'm going to make a dark brown. And assign. And that should assign it. Let's see. And I'm going to make this super rough, I think, because it's a post. Beautiful. Let's see. Uh, looks like Nani's got it. Team Milk's got it. Mr. Marman. Uh, yours is pink on pink. I can't tell if you got it or if you're struggling. Night three soccer ball counts. Weird. Let's see. Struggling? Okay. So use face select mode. And let's select just the door. With uh, You can press the L key. There we go. And with that one, let's uh, take the base color that you have, that you currently have with your principal BSR. And let's make it something else. I don't care what color you feel like making it. Make it a different color. The base color in the principal BSFR. B, can I remember what that stands for? Uh, BSDF. Hey, J hey, JB, how are you doing today? We're uh, doing some 3D modeling. So change the base color. Yep, that's the one, that one. Change it to something else. Cool. Oh, oh, you uh, have two of the same material applied. That's what it is, Mar. Um, you just have, you didn't make a new material. Uh, go ahead and press the minus key on the right side underneath the little pin. Yeah. And that'll get rid of one of them. Uh, airport error. Weird. Okay. Whatever. Uh, let's just add a new material. There's a little plus right on top of it. Click the little plus. That's right above the mark. There we go. And we'll hit new. There you go. And give that guy a name. Your Lucario Naruto runs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What are you talking about, Sonic? What game? Intel by lack of followers. Glitch, I have a shit ton of bot accounts watching your stream. Ah, that sucks. Just give it all the materials you could. You could. There you go, Mar. So you weren't stuck. You just accidentally applied the same material twice. There you go. And make sure for, for metal, you want to make it all the way metallic and roughness down to like, you know, 2. 0.2. To make the roughness down a little bit there you go beautiful beautiful bright pink mailbox and once again also i just gotta say tea milk i love what you're doing tea milk looking like the the true mvp here super adorable so cute i love that to death let's see greetings oh hi alex thank you for joining the discord server Milk tea. Now make it on fire? Oh, you could. You very much could. Uh, this is Unite. Oh, Pokemon Unite's tons of fun, Sonic. You're triggered. You can't delete the other. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I eh, just ignore, ignore it. It might be applied somewhere and you just ignore it. Uh, and then again, if we come back to our layout view, if you want to see your colors, you can click on that guy uh, up top. In the top right corner. Grab your camera outside of edit mode. Uh, number pad zero to go into the camera, N to bring back up little view options, 
go into lock camera to view and scroll out or do whatever you want and position stuff wherever you need to but uh about you you know you're not actually making anything i mean your stuff is looking really cool maiden but at the moment it looks like uh either a, a missile or like uh, a very pointy roman coliseum thing how's it going norwegian norwegian north fallen how are you doing Let's see Normally, we're uh, this is a Beat Saber stream, but uh, we are making 3D models today. How are you doing today? The Norwegian or Fallen. I do remember you, Norwegian. I've just never really tried to uh, uh, read your entire name. The non glow part of the handle? That makes sense, uh, Maiden. Yeah, I just realized I never really tried to... Um, to, to read your name before. And yes, uh, for anyone curious, there is a monkey. The monkey's name is uh, Susan, I believe. Uh, and she's kind of a, a standard of 3D modeling. Why? Uh, because. Streamers can't be arsed with long names. It's not, it's not that uh, I can't be arsed with it. It's just, it's there's no like capitalization differences. So it's hard to read it, if that makes sense. Do, 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 do. Uh, I totally stole Team Milk's idea, by the way, and I'm I'm making a golden monkey head because um, golden monkey head, duh, you know. Let's see, metallic, specular low, roughness really low, and then I'm gonna put it on a um. I'm just going to use my wood material for that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, Metallic looks a lot better in the shading tab, but not the actual render. Any tips? So if it looks better, uh, there is a way you can do that. You can change your render from uh, cycles, which is what it should be by default, or from EV to cycles, uh, but that will make it uh, take a lot longer to render if that makes sense. There's also a thing called, um, oh geez, uh, 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 I'm le losing the name. It's these things. Uh, it basically, it's because it doesn't have a background for it to bounce light off of. Uh, that is called, uh, I'm blanking on it and I am being a bad teacher. HDRI. That's what's called. HDRA. HDRI. Uh, that's be what this background circle-y thing is. It's got stuff for the light to bounce off of. Shift A for a monkey. Yeah. And Suzanne. Whoops. I thought it was Susan. What? Are you okay? Yeah. Um, though, if you want it to try looking better, you could come over here to this little... Uh, this icon, the render properties, and change it from EV to cycles. But again, that might make it take uh, a lot longer to render. Let's see, so if I change it to EV, you can see shiny monkey. If I change it to cycles, you can see much more detailed shiny monkey. There you go. Uh, much more detailed giant monkey. Hey, thank you for the follower, Nico. Welcome to stream. You're buying a new gaming laptop? Very nice. Uh, where are you going to game with it on? Let's see. Roughness down lower. Beautiful. Let's see. Did you get it, uh, T-Milk? Yeah, cycles. And then when you render with F12... You should see, yeah, the top one. Yeah, you got it, render engine. Um, it's definitely a much more beefy way for it to render. So it does take a lot longer. Hmm. 
Maybe by a teardown the destruction game. Ooh, I've heard that's good. Gotta move my lighting. Because I don't like where it's at. Brass monkey, that funky monkey. Brass monkey junkie. Sorry, old, old song. Matt monkey mailbox. Beautiful. Alrighty. So, now that we've all got our wonderful monkey in our mailboxes, also you may have noticed I changed the render engine back to EV, just because it's a lot faster that way. Um, don't be afraid to throw your uh, mailboxes in the showcase channel. And it has been two and a half hours. And this basically, uh, using Cycles Crash Your Laptop. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Team Milk. Hopefully you saved it. Um, if not, that would really suck. Because uh, yours was definitely looking beautiful. Um, let's see. You know what? If it crashed, here, here's what I can kind of do for you. I can come over here and uh, take take a snip and put it into showcase at T milk and boop. At the very least, you'll have a, a, a soft memory of your beautiful monkey mailbox. Um, I took a screenshot and threw it into the Discord for you. There you go. So that basically covers everything that I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, it's been two and a half hours. What do you guys think? Everyone who uh, followed along and everyone who's lurking, uh, did you enjoy the Blender lesson? Did you do you feel like you learned a lot? Uh, is it that you want to do more? Um, it, do you want me to do another one of these? Uh, what did you guys think? Why are you sad, Norwegian? Crashing is part of the game, yeah. Uh, learn to uh, save often. You're too late, just a little bit, but you can always watch the VOD, and uh, the VOD will definitely help out. And this is one thing that I want to mention to just everyone, which is feel free to, if you're ask, if you would like help with these things, um, feel free to just ask for help in the math at discord. I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer every single one of your questions. And I, uh, definitely can't guarantee that I'll be able to, um, you know, ha help right away, but I'll always be able to give advice and I always try to help out everyone who's curious about these. Um, let's see. Playlist. Let's see. Now what's also probably the coolest thing for all you guys is, in a little bit, I'm also going to put, uh, so for, for part of our work, Harach and I actually teach 3D modeling professionally. Um, more so Harach than, than I do. Um, Harach is better than I am. He, he won't admit it, but he is. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys a Blender uh, playlist, which will kind of help out um, giving you lessons for that are curated that we've done. Uh, I, we haven't made them. Um, most of them have been made by this awesome guy named Grant Abbott on YouTube. Um, but we've gone through them and we went, all right, this is a good cap pipeline. Um, it was great. Thank you so much. You didn't expect to be so interactive. You had a nice time. I'm glad, Tea Milk. Um, why monkey no shiny? Uh, why is your monkey no shiny? Change your render setting, Nani. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. But real fast before I help Nani. Um, we will be, I'll give you guys a playlist where you can keep going and keep learning and I can help keep helping out. Uh, let's see, Nani, go over to layout real fast. Go, go to layout, go to layout. Mm -hmm. And you want to click on this little one up here. It looks kind of like a microwave and change render engine to cycles try that yeah render engine try changing it to cycles and now hit render 
the donut and mug ones were uh, help when you're starting. The donut and mug one does help. I feel like personally the donut one is super long and it doesn't cover a lot of the fundamentals. Uh, Nani, I think it's just where your light is because it is shiny. It's just your light is really high. Uh, lower the light or pull the monkey out more. Try grabbing your monkey and bringing it outside of the mailbox and you'll see. Um, the Like I was saying, the donut one is just super long and it doesn't teach the principles. Like we started off today with what's called, again, primitive modeling. That's what you guys started off with. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with primitive modeling. Um, yeah, I think that's your issue, Nani. And you might have some issues with, like the angle and stuff too. Um, but that's what, what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, try lowering your roughness, Nani. Lower the roughness. Blender Guru stuff you can't stand because he teaches how to do one thing. You can't really utilize knowledge. Prim modeling is the foundation of 3D. You should focus on the foundations first. Exactly. Harach just said it. Exactly the thing that I was trying to say, but uh, way better than I could uh, could say it. Um, and that's why I started off with you guys making that lovely, jubbly Christmas tree. Um, I hope you guys had fun. If you're interested, I would love to do another one. Uh, tried Renderman Render. I have not tried Renderman Render. What's Renderman Render, Offcaz? What is that? Um, so you can move it all with one click. Uh, left our object is considered an actual object. So move That's true, yes. Um, roughness no exist. Uh, roughness should exist. Nani, everyone else had roughness. And you're shading. Should be the second one. Roughness. Let's see, roughness. Dude, render. Yep, right. Right there, it's the second one. Uh, metallic, yep. Uh, roughness. Yeah, try making some of those like in the middle. There you go. Roughness, try making roughness like very, very low. Not zero. I wouldn't do very, very low. Zero, I'd do very, very low, personally. Um, yeah, should be good. That Try that, Nani. Um, Mar, there is a way, like, uh, if I come over here to my C Shack, you will notice that uh, this is actually made up of a whole bunch of different wooden planks. So what you can do is called collections. You can right click and add new collection or you can press M. And uh, so they're kind of folders. And so if I want to, I can take this house and I can right click on the collection and say select all objects. And now I can move it all as one object. And I can also notice that one of my uh, these things is in the wrong collection. Grumble, grumble. So I'm just going to click on that, press M, and move it into house bottom collection. There we go. So that's kind of useful too. There you go, Nani. It looks like it works now. Um, but yeah, there we go. I hope that helped. Um, yeah, and if you guys enjoyed it, I would definitely be down to doing another one of these at some point in time. Uh, I'm not sure when, and I'm not entirely sure what I teach exactly, but I would definitely be down to uh, go over some more stuff and do more uh, more teaching and all that. I love how game dev tutorials start in a game engine while they really should start in Blender. Depends on what you're trying to do, I would say. If you're trying to make a game, 3D knowledge, modeling knowledge doesn't matter if you're trying to do just the coding right like if you could just toss in other people's art that's a good way to start depends really on the person i think mar um both the the teaching style and the course um if you want to make a solo game then yeah uh well also depends if you want to be a coder or if you want to make be a 3d modeler and you can hire someone to do art for you really depends um but i do agree if you want to do 100 percent of the game yourself yeah you should start off in uh 3d modeling software personally um, they have had a game on YouTube. We want to make a full game themselves. Yeah, you should probably start off with 3D modeling. Um, alrighty. Then with all that in mind, you guys now have all the skills you need to go off and do some pretty cool stuff. Um, my challenge to you all is to take this mailbox that you've made, take this and uh, run with it and make a house. Make a full, uh, ugly house. You take your cube, uh, make a, a primitive kind of wall shape. Um, go do that in there. Uh, do, 
doot uh, scale in the X make it and make a whole house with the mailbox outside of it you can take entire one cube and you can make a whole house that's actually not even the right way to do that now I think about it I'd cut that up I would uh, use loop cuts and cut it out and all those things it doesn't need to look pretty don't bother making it look pretty don't worry about is this the correct way is this the appropriate way to do it don't worry about that make a house put some windows on it make them blue and shiny so it looks like they've got glass even though they won't um, you can take a uh, a sphere this is a, a fun thing that you can do and take a uh, actually a cylinder make it really big make it really small that way like a pancake make the whole thing uh, into a kind of green dark green shade whoops boop and now I've got a little grassy a uh, little grassy knoll bet you wouldn't have thought I'd be doing that did you that you can put your house on um, yeah it's all Obviously, usually how people do it, but just less fun trying to learn a game dev while... Yeah, that's fair, Mar. I get you. Um, why not sculpting a house? You could do that. Uh, you started encoding? It depends on the person. Figure out mechanics first to populate the game with pretty things. Yeah, yeah. It really depends on the person, I'd say, Mar. Um, is it 7 a.m. yet? It is 2.30 a.m. for me, Nort. And we're just about to end, actually. Um, but yeah. I would recommend to, you know, everyone take what you knowledge you have now. Try to make a big, beautiful, ugly house. It'll be ugly, but that's A-OK. -okay. It'll be yours. And I think that would be an amazing way to, to start off. Uh, and from there, I will also be, as I mentioned before... Oh, did I do that in edit mode? I did. I did a silly thing. Um, this entire uh, ground is uh, part of my mailbox. Whoops! Um, that's OK. Shows people make mistakes. Uh... I'm just going to delete that out of there. So, as I was saying, my challenge to all of you is to take your mailbox scene and turn it into a house and then put it in the showcase. Uh, and as soon as this is done, I'm going to give you guys a spreadsheet full of lessons where you can go on the next steps if you want to keep learning. Feel free to ask me for help. And with all that said, I think we're pretty much done with the stream unless anyone has any questions, comments, or concerns. Or anything like that before uh, I end stuff off. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed it, then make sure to let me know. And I'll consider doing uh, this kind of thing again sometime. Because I had a lot of fun. I love teaching. And you guys have been great. So uh, as long as you guys enjoyed it too, I'd be down to do this more. Uh, and let's see. We need to find someone to... Uh, to raid. Let's go look under the art cat category and let's see if there's anyone who's actually doing 3D modeling right now and you guys can go in and be like, holy crap, I actually kind of understand what's going on right now. Um, let's see, 3D modeling. If I'm the only one doing 3D modeling, that'd be hilarious. Uh, ooh, let's see, there are some people doing some cool stuff. Uh, let's see, do, 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 looks like most of these guys are doing sculpting. So you want to raid someone who's like super small, who has four followers, but it's doing Blender? Let's do that. That sounds fun. Let's go surprise this person who's doing 3D modeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do more 3D? All right, I'll, I'll definitely do more 3D. Cheers, definitely do that house. Definitely awesome. Don't, Andrew, feel lonely. I'm sorry, Hirach. I'm sorry. I'd love to do another Blender stream in the future. Okay. All right. Uh, Leaf, we were just about to raid. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it says I can't raid the channel. Darn, I was about to raid this person who's got, like, four followers. Aw, oh, that makes me sad. Um... Let's see. We'll find someone else to raid. Uh, do 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 do. There's no one interesting who's doing that. 
is doing 3D modeling, unfortunately. Then we'll just raid someone who's playing Beat Saber, because Beat Saber uh, raids are always fun. Who doesn't like uh, raiding Beat Saber people? Uh, we'll raid uh, Zyro. Yeah, that's who we'll raid. Um, yeah, yeah. Why not raid that person? It just literally said it won't let me. It said you cannot raid this channel. So, I don't know. They might have it set to, like, friends only can raid or something like that. But anyway, um, I hope you guys had fun. I know I did. I had a lot of fun teaching you guys. And I look forward to doing it again in the future. Maybe I'll make this an, a monthly thing or an every month thing. I have no idea. But, uh, oh, I'm just in the void today. <laughs> uh, Kappa raise 100k viewers. No idea. Uh, but yeah. Definitely make your houses. Ask me for help. I'll post the spreadsheet up in just a minute. Uh, feel free to check out the VOD if you uh, just came in late and you still want to learn uh, from Matt the Hat. And I hope you had fun. I know I did. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. We'll be back in 48 hours from now with some more Beat Saber. Um, and I'm hoping to tomorrow actually make my own uh, Beat Saber handles and throw them into the game. I just haven't done it yet at the time. Um, yeah. Have a lovely night, everyone. Bye-bye. Right now.